October 6, 2016, Thursday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. O stupid Galatians, who has bewitched you, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the Spirit from works of the law, or from faith in what you heard? Are you so stupid? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does then the one who supplies the Spirit to you and works mighty deeds among you do so from works of the law or from faith in what you heard? The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm The response is, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. This was the oath he swore to our father, Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, he has come to his people. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. October 6th, Thursday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time. The first reading is from Galatians 3, 1-5. to Paul is very, very angry in this letter. Now it's the anger of a parent who sees a child who's destroying his or her life. It would be the anger that somebody might feel if somebody were selling drugs to one's child. It's not so much that he's really angry at them. He's angry at what's happening to them. Their faith is being destroyed. He says, oh stupid Galatians, who's bewitched you? They receive their faith through works of the Spirit. What does this mean? They realized that in order to be justified, they had to trust in the goodness of God. Trust in the fact that Jesus died on the cross and his death freed us from our sins. That's not an action which is called a work of the law, something they did. 
Rather, it's an act of surrender. And they were justified because they surrendered to this love. There is nothing we could do that would force God to love us. He already loves us. We have to surrender to that love. Now, once we've surrendered to that love, obviously, we have to perform works that express our faith. But it's not the works that will justify us. And what does justify us mean? To be justified is to be at peace with God. Because of sin, we were separated from God. Even the account of the first sin makes that clear when Adam and Eve hide from God. Now the relationship has been healed, but not because of anything we've done, because of what God has done. The Gospel is from Luke 11, 5-13. It speaks about somebody coming to one's house at midnight and asking for three loaves of bread, because that person has just received a guest. Now, how likely is it that somebody would show up at another person's house at midnight? Wouldn't it be dangerous to travel at night? And the answer is that very often, especially in hot weather, people would travel at night because of the heat. They would get up very early, travel a couple hours, and then take a nap, and then when it cooled off again, travel until they had to stop. And if there were a full moon or enough light to see, they would go quite late. Well, this person came and asked for bread, But the person inside is thinking, the children are already asleep. If I get up, I'll wake them up. Remember, this house is probably just one room. Everybody's sleeping along the edge of the room. Nevertheless, even if the person doesn't get up because of friendship, the person will get up to stop the racket. This is the same with us and God. If we ask, we'll receive. And God is a good parent who wants to give us what's good. But we have to ask for it. Why? Not because God doesn't want to give it till we ask, but God does want us to remember that he is the source of all good. Because if we don't remember that, then we think we're earning our own living. It always reminds me of the Thanksgiving special for the Simpsons. Bart Simpson, who's a bit of a rascal, listens to the prayer that his father Homer is saying. And Homer says, we thank God for all the food we have. And Bart looks up and says, why are you thanking God? We earned it. It's very often our attitude. It is very good to remember that we're dependent upon the providence of God. God, who's a loving parent, who will always give us what we ask for, especially when we ask for the Holy Spirit. God's not necessarily going to give us the lottery numbers to the next lottery or make sure that we pass an exam that we didn't study for. God will certainly give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And may God bless us.